Today, we're taking a look at the Shark Distributing's HF Stick antennas. Should this be your next mobile or portable antenna? We'll find out on the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons gain access to exclusive content and an early ad-free experience to videos like this one. Help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, today we're going to take a look at the Shark Distributing's HF Stick antennas. You know, if you follow the Parks on the Air activities, you'll find that the Shark Sticks are a popular choice with activators for their performance and convenience. So we're going to take a look at these antennas so you can decide for yourself if you want to add one to your antenna arsenal. In full disclosure, I purchased a set of Shark Sticks with my own funds and uh, the content of this review has not been influenced by the manufacturer at all. Well, according to the manufacturers, the shark antennas uh, represent an economical solution to mobile HF operations. Each antenna is made in America, and it covers a single HF band with a power rating of 250 watts peak envelope power. Each antenna features a 44-inch black uh, fiberglass section with an integral coil and an adjustable 4-foot stainless steel whip. Uh, the base of the antenna uh, has a 3 8 by 24 uh, threaded um, connection and uh, the antennas don't include, include a mount so you're going to need either a magnet base of some type or a 3 8 by 24 threaded uh, type of antenna mount. This review is on the Shark full-size whip antennas. Uh, Shark Distributing also has a, a mini whip uh, version that uh, I didn't test. I think the only appreciable difference between the uh, two is that the uh, short that the mini whips have a shorter whip section makes it a little bit uh, easier to use uh, mobile than the full size version and uh, which has that 48 inch whip. You know, if you're going to go mobile or size is an issue then the mini whip version may be a good choice but um, I'm reviewing the full size version of the antennas. Shark also used to sell a five pack of their most popular sized uh, whips, uh, but the packaging appears to have been recently discontinued. So, uh, but you can still buy these whips individually. Like I mentioned, uh, the bottom half of the antenna is a hollow fiberglass rod. Uh, wire is wound uh, around the rod and then um, it's covered with shrink wrap tubing. The, uh, the amount of the wire you know, wound around the rod really depends on the, uh, the band the antenna is operating in. In effect, the fiberglass section becomes a loading coil for the antenna. If you, have, uh, if you take a look at the lower bands, you know, like the 45 or the 75 meter models, you'll find that um, a section of tightly wound wire, the 75 meter antenna is almost entirely uh, wound with, with wire. At the higher bands, the, uh, like say the 10 meter uh, model, the coil is virtually absent. So the advantage of this is that the, you know, the tightly wound sections creates an induct inductance that electrically shortens the antenna, making it more manageable for mobile use. But the downside is, is that it also uh, increases the Q of the antenna, so your bandwidth gets progressively narrower as you drop in uh, frequency. So much so that um, you need actually two antennas to cover the entire 75 and 80 meter bands. One for the lower half or the 80 meter band and another one for the upper portion or the 75 meter band. We'll talk more about bandwidth in a bit. Uh, the top half of the antenna is a stainless steel whip with a, a ferro that um, holds, the, uh, holds that whip in place with two sets of Allen screws. The uh, weird thing is, is that the Allen screws are two different sizes. The antenna does come with a pair of Allen wrenches, but I recommend that you, know, you invest in an uh, inexpensive set of Allen wrenches as you know, the individual ones always tend to get lost and whatnot. So to tune the antenna, you're going to need to adjust the whip length. You know, Shark provides a little chart that gives you a, a starting point for, the, uh, re for, for each of the different bands for whip lengths, but um, your actual uh, length of this whip is going to 
is going to differ, you know, depending on what free center frequency you choose to tune the antenna at and how the antenna is mounted. So I think that the chart may be um, for the midpoints of the bands because when I was tuning the um, tuning these antennas, I've, I've found that mine were um, a little bit shorter than what was recommended, but I was picking frequencies that were in the uh, upper portions of each of the bands. Uh, the uh, easiest way to tune these antennas is with an antenna analyzer, uh, but you can also do it with, an S with the SW meter in your transceiver by turning your power down uh, to its lowest setting, taking a reading using a constant carrier mode like AM or CW, and then uh, performing an adjustment to the antenna. Repeat until the pro this process and until you're satisfied. Well, the good news is, is that um, the tuning process seldom needs to be uh, repeated unless you're, you know, you're drastically changing how your operation or, or how the antenna is being mounted. Since we're talking about tuning, I need to mention a problem I'm having with the 40 meter stick. On the other antennas in the set, I have no problem getting the SWR down to 1.3 to 1 or less uh, with the exception of the 40 meters uh, HF stick antenna. For that one, you know, the best I could actually get it down to is about 1.9 to 1. Now I've done a little bit of research and uh, talking with others about this issue and it appears that the 40 meter stick can have, be quite sensitive to the capacitive coupling that occurs between the magnet mount base and your vehicle. Some people report that using a longer or a larger magnet base, like one of those tri-magnet bases, seems to solve the problem because it gives you more capacitive coupling, while others say it doesn't. Uh, other people recommend that adding a counterpoise to the magnet base also seems to work, but um, it's, it appears that 40 meters is quite sensitive when it comes to capacitive coupling, and it wants to be a, you know, there's also a big bit of variability in deployment and other external issues that really affect how this antenna is tuning. So it can be difficult to say if a particular solution will work for you or not. But on that issue, I recently talked to Dave, KZ9V, who has had a lot more experience with the shark sticks and also has really spent a lot more time working out that SWR issue with the 40 meter stick. And here's a portion of our telephone conversation that you might find interesting. Hello. Hey Dave, it's Michael Martins calling. Wow, the, the, the world famous Michael Martins? Well, I don't know if I'm world famous. I guess I might have a certain level of notoriety. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, the uh, shark stick. Yeah, let's talk I, about that a little I, bit. I bought a uh, mount to screw on to the back of the tail, not on the tailgate, but on the on the bed of my pickup truck. And I didn't really want to drill any holes in it. But it's a 10-year-old truck, and, and I figured this won't hurt anything. So I put it It's back on the back of the bed, back by the, the uh, passenger side taillight. But it's screwed hard to the metal of the truck, so it eliminates anything to do with magnets and, you know, three magnets or one magnet or five-inch magnet. or There's no magnet at all with this thing. I put the 40-meter stick on it, and it made no difference. Okay. So the, the VSWR with the bag mount on the roof has this is exactly the same as if it's metallically bonded to the truck. Hmm. So the mystery still remains on that 40 meter stick and the, the magical solution, which, you know, I've tried it several times now and I, I just can't get it to fail is that stupid ferrite clamp 20 feet, three inches from the base of that magnet. Mm -hmm. It's bizarre. That's but the, it, but yeah. When you look at you look at the VSWR sweep on the analyzer and it's textbook. I mean it's just beautiful. And uh, I don't know. 
And no. evidently, that must be just 40 meters just must be a problem with that style of antennas. Because if you read online, you know, everybody's got the same gripe when it comes to 40 meters. Some people, you know, they don't have an issue with it. And others, it's just hunky-dory. So, and some people say the tri-magnet works. And some people say, you know, clamping it works. And um, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I got to I gotta go. So. Uh, all right. Good deal. Have yeah. fun. Oh, yeah, you too. Take care. All right. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. So, in replicating Dave's experiment, I placed uh, the 40-meter the antenna on the roof of my car, added 25 feet of RG8X coax to the existing 16 feet included with the mag mount base, and then I ran the coax perpendicular to the car. The SWR drop down from 1.9 to 1 to 1.5 to 1, but the center frequency also moved from 7200 kilohertz up to 7350. I then extended the whip as far as it would go and um, got the resonant frequency back down in range to 7204 kilohertz. Putting a ferrite at about the uh, 20 foot mark on my um, entire run of coax helped a lot and I ended up with a final SWR of 1.2 to 1 at 7204 kilohertz. In this configuration, you know, the coax is acting like a counterpoise, so there is a bit of variability in the SWR depending on how the coax is uh, laid out, and um, if you use the ferrite as a choke to control the length of the counterpoise itself. Finally, let's talk a bit about bandwidth, as this can be an issue on the lower bands. When we describe bandwidth, we talk about two to one bandwidth, or the amount of frequency spread when the SWR is two to one on either end of the sweep. So the, the great news is that the 10 meter uh, antenna covers the entire 10 meter band. So you can tune it for about 28.5 megahertz and uh, the two to one bandwidth covers everything. Uh, with a bandwidth of over 2.6 megahertz. For the other end bands, it, gets, it, it starts to get a little bit narrower. Uh, the 15 meter antenna has about 1.4 megahertz of bandwidth, and the 20 meter antenna has about 500 kilohertz of bandwidth, both of which uh, capably cover uh, those respective uh, bands. As we move to the 40 meter band, you can see on the chart my SWR issue. Initially, the antenna was showing an SWR of 1.9 to 1, with uh, 60 kilohertz of bandwidth. If we can get the SWR down lower, the bandwidth will increase. So in, my, uh, so in my lengthening of the coax, I found that I was able to increase the bandwidth to about 170 kilohertz with an SWR of 1.2 to 1 at the center frequency. This makes the uh, top half, um, this makes the antenna you know, usable on the top half of the band, but real, not really in the CW or digital portions, as I had to use the entire whip length in order to get, uh, get there. Dropping down to 75 meters, the bandwidth gets paper thin, literally 60 kilohertz with a center resonant frequency of about 1.2 to 1. 75 and 80 meters is a really big band, and you can see how you know, that can be an issue with antennas like this. In order to test their operations, I took the antennas out on two Parks on the Air activations this past winter. Uh, the first in, was in early January, it was at Rib Mountain State Park in Wausau. I used um, both the 40 and the 20 meter uh, sticks. SWR on the 40 meter stick uh, averaged about 1.6, 1 1.7 to 1, but the um, noise floor of that location prevented me from really working any, any, any contacts on that band. Moving to 20 meters though, uh, the tuning was much better and I picked up about 35 contacts in, in 40 minutes time. I did try the 75 meter antenna on the mountain. Dave KZ9V lives about 90 miles away from me and while uh, he could hear me just above the noise floor on 75 meters, I could not hear him. But you know, a vertical antenna doesn't really, isn't the best choice for um, short distance contacts on 75 meters like that. So a couple weeks later, I used both the 40 and the 20 meter sticks again for the winter field day when I was activated High Cliff State Park near Appleton, Wisconsin. 
It was a busy weekend on the bands, but I and I had no problem getting through many of the pileups on both 40 and 20 meters with the shark sticks. On ear reports were quite good. I received excellent signal reports using the using the antennas. Now I put links to both of these videos in the video description below if you want to see and hear more of the actual operation of the antennas. Otherwise, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with how uh, the the shark sticks handled on both of those bands. So what do I think about the shark sticks HF whip antennas? Well, first off, you know, they're well constructed and they seem to be uh, quite durable. They are quite convenient, you know, once they're tuned. You know, band changes are easy and um, is swapping out the antennas. And finally, you know, they're inexpensive. At under, at under $25 an antenna, you know, they may be um, one of the best values for an HF antenna that you can find. And now for the bad, you know, mostly the downsides have to do with their bandwidth and tuning on the lower bands. The bandwidth at, at 80 meters is paper thin, so you know, you're gonna need two antennas to really cover that band, one for 80 and then one for 75 meters. And also the 40 meter band antenna is problematic to tune. Its capacitive coupling is iffy. So, you know, you have to deal, deal with workarounds to get a good tune on, the ba on that band. And finally, you know, their convenience is also a bit of a hindrance. You need separate antennas for each band. So while it is easy to change bands by changing antennas, you also have to, you know, take the effort to change antennas. But all in all, you know, I, I think that the Shark HF sticks are a good deal and I've enjoyed using them as part of my in, uh, wintertime parks on the air activations. I most, I'll most likely continue to use them um, as a, a vertical antenna option for future activations. I like that they are um, a good choice for HF mobile, especially if you work HF on one band only or have the ability to stop the vehicle and change bands. I also recommend that if you plan on buying more than one of the Shark Sticks to um, you know, purchase a set of these couplers as they make um, changing the antennas fast and easy. And that's it. You know, I'd like to thank Dave White KZ9V for helping me with this video. You know, consulting with him uh, several times was crucial in working out the uh, issues with the 40 meter antenna. And for my and for my patrons over on Patreon, as a bonus, I'll upload uh, the entire telephone conversation Dave and I had about the SW uh, about the about the issues with the 40 meter antenna, and also the SWR plots of each of the uh, of each of the antennas. So you can check that out on Patreon.com/kb9vbr antennas. Well, do you have questions or comments? about the Shark HF stick antennas. Well, please leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through them and um, you know, follow up on them. And who knows, you know, maybe your question will end up in our next Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives production of future videos. Uh, support us on Patreon to help keep the mission alive. And um, if you like this video, always give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. That's your best way to be notified when a future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.